What if you don't like who you've become in a narcissistic relationship? This is a very common problem for survivors of narcissistic abuse. Sometimes you may struggle to recognize yourself, struggle to see who you've become, maybe struggle with liking yourself. My name's Ruth Ann. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm an expert in relationships and issues of narcissism. And in this video, I'm going to help you make sense of the effect the narcissistic relationships have on you. What parts of you come out in response to those relationships? how you can make sense of it, and most importantly, how you can connect with the strongest, wisest, and most compassionate parts of yourself to take care of you, protect you, and to make good and wise decisions for yourself in the future. All of us have different modes, different hats that we wear in different circumstances. There's nothing wrong or pathological about that. The way you are at home with your family or with your friends may be quite different from the way you are at work. The way you are when you're alone with your partner um, may be different from how you are when you're with family or friends or with your children. So we all have different parts of ourselves that come out in different circumstances. And, and it can be helpful to think what parts of yourself came out in a highly narcissistic relationship. At the beginning of a narcissistic relationship in what's commonly called the love bombing stage, it's not unusual for our more vulnerable childlike parts to be activated. The dream of ideal love, the enormous fantasy, the being swept off your feet, the excitement and the chemistry can feel exciting and exhilarating. It appeals to a younger part of us that wants to be loved unconditionally, that wants to be loved completely and can easily get sucked into the whirlwind of that kind of romance. But as anyone watching this probably already knows, the whirlwind romance often doesn't last and can quickly turn into a nightmare. And when that nightmare happens and you're facing the reality of daily neglect, gaslighting, emotional abuse, physical abuse, betrayal in the forms of infidelity or financial betrayal, there are many ways that narcissistic relationships hurt and undermine you. And inevitably, some different coping modes are going to come out. You may have a coping mode of dissociating or detaching in order to protect yourself from really experiencing and seeing the enormity of what you're going through. You may cut off from your emotion and become kind of numb. And that may be especially so for people who have narcissistic parents or people who are in narcissistic relationships where the options to leave or escape are very limited. And so in order to simply survive, to get through, it makes sense to numb out a little bit, to cut off from emotions, to just get through the day. And that part of you protects you, but it also keeps you stuck because it stops you from being able to really experience the enormity of what's going on and potentially make plans to escape it or change it in some way. You may also have a part of you that fights back that becomes angry, enraged, and defensive, that shouts and protests, maybe even gets aggressive on occasion, an angry, protective part that really wants to protect you, that wants to stand up for you, but maybe doesn't do it in a way that is very skillful and effective. You might find yourself getting drawn into extended conflict, justifying yourself and defending yourself endlessly in circular arguments, or maybe you become compliant, surrendering your needs and your wishes to the other person, constantly trying to anticipate what they're going to want, how they're going to feel, and to try to keep them calm, keep them happy, and keep the peace. And maybe it works to a certain extent. Maybe it makes home life more bearable, but ultimately you're sacrificing your own needs and you're losing touch with yourself and becoming ever more invisible and neglected in your relationship. Or perhaps you have a very perfectionistic, over-controlling mode coping by trying to be good enough, by constantly striving to meet expectations and be a good enough partner. And maybe it means you look good. Maybe you perform a role well. And at times, maybe the narcissistic person in your life is grateful that you fulfill that role for them. But ultimately, that kind of perfectionism is exhausting and it can leave you harsh, critical of yourself. Sometimes, often, you might internalize the voice of the person who's abusing you, hearing their words, hearing the gaslights, 
hearing their criticisms in your head as you go about your day. And maybe in your own mind, in your own internal world, you begin to respond to that inner critic just the way you responded to a narcissistic person. Perhaps you try to please them or you try to be perfect or you get angry with yourself and begin to beat yourself up. Or maybe you become detached, numb, just plodding through life. These are all understandable responses. And in some situations, all of them may serve an important function. They may keep you safe and they may help you survive. One of the tragedies of narcissistic abuse is even when the relationship has ended, the internal damage can still be there. You may find yourself numbing out, struggling to cope with even normal minor conflict in friendships or relationships. Or you may find yourself quick to defend yourself, to get angry, to protect your reputation. Or you may find yourself always pleasing people, always trying to anticipate other people's needs and sacrificing your own. Understanding these as different parts of us and understanding where they've come from. And sometimes they've come entirely from the relationship with the narcissistic person that you're in. Other times they come from other places in our lives too. Maybe experiences within our families or within our schools or within our communities as we were growing up. And understanding ourselves and understanding the different modes that we find ourselves in can help us to take charge. Because all of us also have a healthy grown-up mode, a sturdy adult who we can call on to steer the ship. A healthy, sturdy adult who can see the love bombing for what it is, who can recognize the fantasy and tell our younger selves to be wise and ask difficult questions. A healthy, sturdy self who is confident that we're okay, that we don't deserve criticism or abuse, and who responds to gaslighting without argument and without defense, because what's to be argued and what's to defend when you've done nothing wrong? It can be helpful to understand which modes your narcissistic relationship brought out in you. It can be helpful to make sense of them, to label them even as they happen, to recognize, oh, look, there's my angry protector going into overdrive. And maybe that's not needed in this situation. Or we can recognize, well, I'm detaching a little bit. Why is that? What is it I'm trying to avoid? Because it may not be so overwhelming. All of us need a healthy grown-up adult inside us who can take charge, who can listen to what's going on, who can pay attention and not be overwhelmed by it. Someone who can help us to be wise and ask good questions. Someone who can nurture and care for us as we heal and cover. All of us can have a strong, sturdy, healthy adult within us. It may be difficult to feel that part of you, but that part of you is there. Goal of therapy after narcissistic abuse for me when I work with people is to really help them build that healthy, sturdy adult that part of them that can see the whole picture, that can understand what's happening, and nurture those vulnerable parts of you, and to ask difficult questions and to face difficult situations with courage and compassion. That part of you can also manage criticism, either from the inner critic or abuser in your head or an actual abusive person. To be able to respond to them from a place of knowing your worth, knowing your value, not doubting yourself, a place of self-compassion and strength, where you don't feel the need to defend yourself or to get angry and inflame the situation further. A part of you can recognize your needs, stop you from sacrificing yourself, allow you to set boundaries and to tolerate when other people in your life may not be so happy about some of the boundaries that you might want to hold. And that's okay. A part of you can tolerate that and recognize that those boundaries are still worth holding and that your needs and your wishes and your priorities are important and should be given attention and priority. Ultimately, recovery after narcissistic abuse is a process of truly becoming yourself. And rather than not liking or hating the person you've become or the modes that you developed, you can recognize those modes served a function, helped you to survive, and hopefully you can learn to appreciate those modes for the function they served, but also recognize that their role in your life will hopefully become much less as you build a healthy, stronger, sturdier self 
as you begin to treat yourself with more self-respect, dignity, and compassion, as you get better at holding boundaries and building relationships that are based on respect and reciprocity, the more you hold your values and consider your needs and priorities to be of importance and worthy of attention. And you may find that those coping modes, in as much as they've served to function, may not be so needed in your life. For all of us, this is a work in progress. There isn't an end point where you finally get there and you get a stamp that says recovered. None of us ever truly arrive at this point. There's no point at which you get a stamp of approval. Recovered it doesn't work like that. Loving and respecting yourself is the relationship of a lifetime. It's going to evolve and build over time in different seasons and different times of your life. And that's okay. You may even find that those old coping modes come back from time to time, and sometimes they may even serve a useful function, and that's okay. But hopefully the need for those modes will become less and less over time as you build a sturdier, stronger, and healthier adult version of you. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment and let me know what you think. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe so you can see more on narcissism and recovery after narcissistic abuse. I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, take good care.